Another week, another Eagles film breakdown. Today, we'll be looking at kind of traditionally boring position, guard, Tyler Steen. He was a tackle at Alabama and Vanderbilt, but coming into the league, the Eagles have decided to play him at guard most likely. Can he steal a starting job away from a guy who was actually a backup himself last year? What's up, it's your boy St. John. Come back after another analysis video, and I kid you not, that's my real name. And today, like I said, Eagles film review, Tyler Steen could reasonably be a week one starter. I don't think so, but we're just going to take a look at it. We're going to look at some you know, quality players that may not be starters for us, but will play essential roles in backup positions or in different formations. They'll see themselves getting on the field to play a key number of snaps. So let's look at this guy. He's number 56 now. Was that... Um, the dearly departed Isaac Seamalo's number? Maybe. All right, so let's get started with uh, his strengths. Has good size and frame and is a really good athlete. So he's like six foot three or so, um, 321. So I mean, a really good uh, size at, um, at, at interior position, at the interior position at guard. And um, his arm length is where he comes up short. You know, um, he, has, he has those alligator arms, 32 inch arms. So um, a little bit on the shorter side, 34, 35, 36 is where you want him to be if they're going to play outside tackle, um, offensive tackle, which is why he's slated to be an interior player for us, most likely. Um, very durable and versatile. He's played right tackle and left tackle over the past four seasons. Uh, Alabama and Van Vanderbilt, he played, I think, three uh, years at, at uh, Vanderbilt. Right tackle or left tackle or a mix of both. And then uh, he hasn't missed a start. We, you know, went to Alabama. He uh, started for them as well, protecting, I think, the blind side of a um, of Bryce Young. He has good recovery skills if he is beaten off the snap. So this is good because this is going to combat some of um, what we run into later with him running into issues on the weaknesses side. But... Um, yeah, I mean, like, he just has to use the recovery skills. Don't panic, especially at the NFL level when you get caught. I mean, sometimes just you can make it worse by, you know, holding penalty or whatever. Um, trying to push a guy past your quarterback and you don't push him into him. So we'll see how he deals with that, especially that adversity. It's the big leagues. You know, everybody's strong and really fast. Everybody's can be astute. Not everybody puts in the time to work to be the best player that they can be. But a lot of guys out there, I mean, most guys you're going against um, most weeks are gifted in some way, shape, or fashion, whether they are a starter or a backup. And especially, you know, D-linemen, they're coming in waves. They send those guys in, in uh, <laughs> units one, two, three, if they have a third unit. But, um, you know, you're going to encounter guys with different skill sets and different, you know, um, different body builds and different um, little habits and um <clears throat> little idiosyncrasies that they have so to their game. So you're going to have to study those things and have first, you know, your teammates hopefully baptize you and, you know, the finer details of the league, things that you can, you can pick up, stances, you know, hints, you know, the, the guy, the way that, you know, the guy is in his stance, he's leaning, his knuckles are white. I mean, he's going to go, you know, he's going to go, uh, go straight at, straight in. Or, you know, if he's, you know, tilted back a little bit, that means he's uh, coming with a different technique. So, Noticing that and also noticing your tells. So we'll see how he adjusts. And I mean, they'll get him ready. Stoutland University is a, a great university that uh, gets you ready with a full ride scholarship. <laughs> so take advantage of it, kids. All right. I also noticed he has good recovery skills if he's beaten initially. So, I mean, that's good. Uh, like I said, the key is don't panic. You know, practice these drills, you know, like your hand fighting and um, how to recover um, in your pass set you know, and uh, run set. Um, what can you do when you're, when you are beaten, you know, you don't want to grab, you don't want to, um, you know, like you say, you don't want to panic, um, things that are going to get you flags and, or, you know, maybe get you injured or, um, yeah. yeah, you just want to make sure that, I mean, like you're ready for the next snap, but, um, learn from it and see how you know, this, the guy can be exposed or if you can recover, um, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, if you get beat initially, it doesn't have to be a loss down. He doesn't dominate in the run game, but he has enough play strength to create momentum, uh, momentum movement. So he had 39 reps in the, um, on the bench. So he, he's plenty strong. 
Um, but yeah, the play play strength is an, is a whole other deal because you know when you um, it, it, it depends on your leverage. Is your technique right? Are you you know you have a good anchor position? Are you in position? Um, so if you're out of position and you have all the strength in the world, it doesn't matter. And they can, you know, use that against you as well. Stabs and different techniques that D-linemen use to uh, use leverage against you. It's a game of leverage, you know, playing uh, on the offensive line. And, um, yeah, being in position, using the right leverage, and, you know, uh, covering that with technique, um, you can make yourself pristine. And, like, Jeff Stoutland will get them right, get them right on the technical elements of the game. But um, how much can he learn? How much can he absorb? And also reading and reacting, you know, like, can you make use of that knowledge in that moment and not get overwhelmed? You know, because these guys are pros, you know, they're going to know you sometimes better than you know yourself and know your tells and your weaknesses. Um, and, and yeah, being able to use um, those against you like that. That's a whole other thing. Knowing that you can be the guy. OK, cool. And then building off of that, you know, they're, they're going to sink moves. You know, they're going to pass off responsibilities. There's so many things to confuse you. And uh, to make you, you know, lose confidence in yourself. So you have, you know, you're gonna be surrounded by four other, you know, very solid to great guys around you. Um, use their knowledge. You're gonna be next to uh, center Jason Kelsey, who's all pro. And then, you know, in between Lane Johnson, so this is a perfect place to be. Um, glean off of them. Um, play in sync. <laughs> yeah, I love that band. Um, and you, you, yeah, while you, while you can, you know, soak up all the, the knowledge and information and advice you can, especially while playing next to Kelsey, who probably won't be here next year, you know, um, prognosticating, but he, he could be. So, I mean, uh, and Johnson, while you can, because, he you know, he said he's going to play another two years, got another uh, extension for a year for $33 million, but we'll see how his body holds up and how his mental holds up. Um, next, I wouldn't call him a mauler in the run game by any means, but he has adequate play strength to create lanes, uh, lanes uh, rushing lanes. So, I mean, um, you know, you want your, your guard, especially your right guards, or your, your guards, especially your right guard, to be a masher in the run game. He's not that. And um, we'll see how he has, you know, he has the, the, the frame. Um, six foot three, like I said, two, two uh, well, he might be taller than that. I'm just going to say six, six foot three. Um, 321, so he has the, the, the build, the frame. But, like I said, you know, he, he could – that's, that's why I don't have him stated to win this this uh, this contest between him and Cam Jurgens. Yes, he has some, some built-in advantages we'll get into later, but um, the play strength. He could use a year in the gym in our program, get, you know, getting his physique right, getting the right fuel in his, bo his body to get him recovered and um, to build muscle mass. So, I mean, he could be a whole different type of beast. We don't even know what um, Cam Jurgens is looking like. We haven't heard about him, you know, his build or anything like that, anything noticeable. But um, I'm, I guarantee you that his play strength is not what it was last year. Um, and it doesn't need to be, like, amazing. But he's an athlete, you know, at center. He, he's just as quick, maybe even quicker than Jason Kelsey. Um, I, don't, I don't think so because, I mean, he's one of the most athletic centers in, in the history of the league. But um, and even at his size, he's not a smallish, like, traditionally uh, smaller guy like you know, the guys of the years past. But... Um, yeah, I mean, like, you don't need to be a monster there, but, you know, if you can be just above these, you know, at least decent um, and cover that with technique and being in the right position, then you can, that puts you uh, several steps ahead of, you know, your colleagues, especially those that you have to block, and um, would give you a great advantage. I mean, start you off with a great advantage to, you know, like, maybe play behind the eight ball a little bit if you have to. You can get beat or... Um, if they just surprise you with some moves or whatnot. So, so I mean, it, it, it's a very physical game, but it's also, you know, a very heady game there on the line. Eagles got themselves a really solid offensive guard, offensive tackle prospect in Tyler Steen, awesome size, and plays with fantastic balance and movement skills. Natural pass protector with clean with clean feet, too. Made a lot of key blocks for Gibbs. So, I mean, that's great. He played the way for Gibbs. So that's a good sign and in the run game. Like I said, he's not inept. He's not, he's not, you know, um, and he can't do it. He just has to learn um, how to do it on a consistent basis. And uh, I trust Jeff Stoutland to get him right with in that regard. But natural pass protector, I mean, yeah, that, that's cool. Um, that's more so his forte because, you know, especially at tackle, you're going to, your main job, you're, you're getting paid essentially to, to erase, to stop those guys out there on the edge. Stop them from getting to the quarterback and also setting the edge um, against the run. But, uh 
awesome skit size and play with fantastic balance movement skills i mean he's great that, that that spells great news for his prospects at center i mean at center at interior uh line position at guard because you know our we want our guys to uh to move around a bit and uh you know draws you know like pulls pause and um screens and, and such we, we want them to to be mobile so um he's not cam jurgens he's not the athlete out there but you know he he's, he has some good movement skills so that's good to hear he's not like a, a plotting guy out there so I remember like we had sean andrews and he just wasn't the most mobile guy but he could he could be he, he was the best road grader but past pro i mean like you know he could be a little uh stiff and uh rigid so very quick off the snap, which enables him to deal with outside edge rushers despite his limited length. So, yeah, like I said, he has alligator arms, you know, 32-inch arms on the shorter side, uh, which, you know, he has to compensate for. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but the outside pass rushers, he's able to um, to, to negate them because, he's you know, he's using uh, not technique. And at that level, it's good enough. Um, but at the next level, like I said, these guys are, are pass rushing mavens. They eat, sleep, breathe, uh, getting to the quarterback using, you know, they, you know, they're specialists. They have, you know, maybe five moves that they're good at. And then, like, you know, some of them, they still, like, maybe they be the, the stab, the hump. Um, I almost said the pump and dump. That's a uh, red pill shit. <laughs> but um, the swims, I mean, there's so many things that you can you, you can uh, master. And then you can, once you master a technique, you want to run counters off of that. You know, speed to power, uh, power to speed, feints. Uh, double swiping, I mean, knocking down like their, their, uh, whatever their weakness is, you want to attack that, attacking the outside arm and then, you know, spinning off of that. So there's so many things that you can do um, as a defensive lineman and having, being able to counter that, you know, like I said, his linemates have so many years of experience, they can help him to prepare him to get ready, especially to make a transition uh, transition uh, from outside to interior lineman because he's never played that and that's kind of a bit of a concern because, um, I mean, like, it's better... It'd be, it's an easier transition from Cam Jurgens to uh, go from interior, you know, just next door, basically, essentially, to guard than it is from a guy, you know, like, to change his pass set, to change his, his thinking, um, to change his, his viewpoint and what he's looking at, and also, to, you know, contact, and, like, you're playing in the phone booth um, there in the interior. So there's so many things that are, are different. Um, even the way you, you set, you know, it's going to be different as opposed from lining up on the outside and having that space to work with as well. And then getting that muscle, muscle memory used to a different position, uh, different altitude, different um, alignment. You can see he's pretty fluid too and gets depth quickly to prevent getting, uh, prevent being beaten on the edge. He moves well. So that's great. We're going to run to the issue where, you know, we got to stay overset and um, you, you're so worried about getting beat to the edge that you leave room, you know, you leave, you're, you're, out, you're, so, out, you're so wide outside they just take you inside or they fake uh, to lead you outside. And, and then, you know, they, they take advantage of you being, you know, misaligned. And, you, you know, by the time you turn, you know, you're at a disadvantage to be able to stop them. And the momentum just, you know, they blow past you or they knock you off and, you know, have free access to the quarterback. Active hands and pass protection, which enable him to prevent defensive linemen from getting their hands on his chest. This is especially important when you have shorter arms. So, yeah, you know, if you don't have shorter arms, you're going to have less leverage to be able to push a guy away um i mean yeah and yeah and it also to be able to you know to what you know not grab wide but you know like engage wide um so you have to kind of cut that off and like you know his act he, he's very you know good at, maybe he's, he's aggressive with his hands you know very good at you know making making contact because you have to be proactive can't just you know sit, you know sit back and let everything come to you, and they also play by ear depending on the guy. But um, you want to be able to uh, you know before they make contact, uh, make contact with them and control the situation, cut cut off their you know their head of steam you know before they they build up build it up and uh, be able to set themselves up for an array of pass rushing moves you know to stem you basically. Um, but yeah, it seems like he's good at, at doing that. So like, like they're, they're saying here, a lot of potential. Welcome to Stoutland U. <laughs> All right, some Monday, Monday morning uh, Tyler Steen clips. You can see the short arms, but also the active hands to keep defenders off his chest and pass pro. Good anchor here too. So like if anchor, having like your lower body set, you know, because if your lower body and your upper body aren't stabilized, you know, they're going to be able to destabilize you. 
uh, knock off your balance, balance it, you know, if your feet are too wide apart, you know, they can um, attack that base and knock that, knock you off, which knocks your hands off. So that, I mean, that bait, your, everything starts from the base. You, you, you build your power up from the legs up, you know, and uh, you don't have to have the strongest upper body because you can use that base, um, your legs to generate that power. And um, then like in the, in the Super Bowl, and guys glided off of guys because they're using, you know, they're channeling the energy, I mean, the kinetic energy from their legs up and through their body and not just, you know, using their upper body, which is just dumb. It's just using essentially at the max half of your strength, you know, and which doesn't allow you to, to um, which is a waste of, of your lower body. So excellent feel for pass rushers spacing and angles feels like a pretty intelligent player who rarely gets caught out so that's great to hear you know like you no know, um i think is a really smart guy intelligent guy um i hope he's able to match his you know football iq or maybe exceed it um and great you know like uh, vanderbilt is a very smart university guys you know have to be very uh heady to to go there so i don't know if he came in purely, purely on an academic scholarship but it, you know it's clear that um, even if he did so, you know, he wasn't lacking in the mental department. Um, and you guys want guys to be able to, you know, to create plays out there and, and think for themselves. Um, cause I mean, even though they're, you're essentially sometimes it's, it's five guys on the Island and you're playing, you're playing connected, but you know, one-on-ones, nobody can help you. Nobody can save you. You got to be able to save yourself. So, um, angles, spacing, uh, free rushers, so free rushers going to be, you know, guys that, that come in, um, and you have to know what you're doing you can have somebody tip you off like, hey, hey call out but by the time it's too late you gotta be able to you have you know you want to have a guy that anticipates those guys know knowing that you know you, you start from the inside out you protect um spacing knowing that i mean it's like i said it's different for him coming from the um tackle position you know right next to a guy you're not gonna have so much space to operate in and then the guys looping in like you know where do you want to be you know depending on how they're trying to attack you and uh they might you know um have linebackers come over to a gap you know pretend you know like faint like they're going to blitz and then run off uh back out and then or delay blitzes so spacing is going to be very important how do you how do you engage with the guy and um and also trying to prevent penalties and flags and angles i mean they, if you can cut a guy off you don't have to be the fastest guy a lot of you know football is about angles and like speed kills if the guy's faster than you you know like he's not gonna have as much spacing but if you're ready if you you know and can anticipate what's coming you're gonna know you're gonna have time to you know um get in position in the right angle and uh make you know the eyes don't get fooled by the eye candy like i said you know them coming up the uh the a gap and, and, and things like that so there's so much discipline involved and preparedness readiness you know film study and like i said stoutland and his, his teammates will get him ready for the rigors of the nfl all right uh when his technique is good his anchor looks pretty solid so i mean like i said like uh knowing how to you know like the technique and, and, and anchor go hand in hand because if, you, if your anchor is good, that means you have a good technique and um, you're able to, I would say, uh, by extension, um, employ that technique, which is, you know, the, the, you know, the, the um, shuffling of your feet in good position spacing without being disjointed, um, balance and uh, being able to channel, you know, striking the ground and then applying that pressure and then having it bounce back at you and then having it multiply your force instead of, you know, take away from it or negate it. Um, but, yeah, the, his anchor um, and, and being able to employ techniques and hand usage, hand usage as well. Um, and yeah, hand finding, that, that stuff is very important, how you engage and then how you uh, stave off a guy. But he's not going to compare with Cam Jurgen in terms of movement and space, who is, I mean, yeah, exactly. But who moves, but he moves well enough in space and looks like looks a fluid athlete looks like a fluid athlete i should say um but yeah that, that, that's good he won't be a liability but he's not going to be the most athletic but you know we don't need that um and coming over from tackle I think, like if he's a decent athlete as a tackle i feel like he could be a above average you know athlete as a guard because it, it um you know just the movement skills like they they don't translate but i feel like like he you know from him um being able to not not run, but um, his, his his pass pro set will help him in in uh, moving within a, a confinement. You know, like they they have a set stance they use. I feel like that you know they, they'll be a good indicator of him being able to um, to pull and, uh, and and get off of those screens and some of that movement. Yeah, basically. 
All right, you can also see he's very comfortable on the move and in space. You can imagine he would do a fair bit of this if he plays guard for the Eagles, exactly, because we are very mobile. Um, Landon Dickinson, you have to be pulling him too. And he's a taller, bigger guy, but you know he moves well enough. And I, I think he, this guy is more athletic than in Landon, and um, that that bodes well. All right, weaknesses: pass pro against bull rushes needs work. His anchor is inconsistent and gets pushed back into the lap of the quarterback too much. So I mean, that means his, uh, his you know, his. He's, he's um, I don't know if it will deal with his arms or just, he, you know, his play strength is adequate, like you said, but isn't good enough to, you know, uh, push those guys off. That's a little bit concerning because bull rushes are, I mean, like, kind of like um, power rushes. I would say the va major majority, it, it's, it's, but at least, at the very least, it's 50-50. So uh, it's going to be a lot of huge guys. I mean, guys that are bigger than you and they're strong, you know, stronger than you. And some guys might be faster than you, even though they're you know, bigger. So um, think about Jordan Davis. I mean, he's bigger than this guy, stronger than him, and faster than him. So I mean, it's just not a good combination. So you want your anchor, like you said, you can depend on your anchor. Like even if your uh, positioning is, is starting out bad, if you, have, if you have your feet up on your, if you play with good technique, um, you're going to be able to combat um, to save yourself. You know, like you might not be able to stop a guy from getting there, but you can delay him. Um, you can um, hold hold him off until you know like you can get the pass off or um, get enough of him where you know, like you you affect the play in a positive way or you keep the play from being a negative. All right, when his technique falters, his anchor does too, and he has some reps where he gets pushed by far too easily. So um, that has to do with the play strength, and um, you know, like I said, a year in the weight room. I think it will do him uh, good, which is why I don't see him beating out Cam Jurgens. We'll get into a little bit of that, of that later. Why? Um, some extensions on why. He lunges forward too often and ends up off balance, which is an issue. So, yeah, um, you want to let it come to you. You don't want, you know, let them come to you. Don't uh, come to, you know, don't run off to go to them. And, you know, you can't, especially on the, on the, on the, the edge, you can't do that consistently. Or um, you'll be a liability to the offense. So, you know, they'll be coming out, crashing off your side to get to the quarterback. You know, the shortest distance to a quarterback <laughs> will be through you. Um, his biggest issue is his awkward lunge. He does have to snap, which causes him to lose balance. This is also where short arms don't doesn't help because, yeah, he can't recover. And, he, you know, this, you know, stubby alligator falls down quickly. And, they, you know, um, they just knock those arms down real quick and then use their length. Because a lot of guys are long as hell. They're able to, you know, to use, you, you know, your short arms, your, your lack of leverage to their leverage and uh, cast your sides, swim around you, get around you, maneuver around you. And then, you know, you're on your ass and you're looking up while your quarterback, you know, is under attack. Um, but, yeah, the, the lunge, like I said, he's, he's just anxious because he's trying to compensate for what he doesn't have. Hold it was a problem last year when he gets beat, he can be quite grabby. Yeah, as, as guys first instinct when they get beat is to grab because they're in panic mode. And it's all downhill from there. Doesn't show any elite natural power or force in the run game. So this is like where I said like you can use a year in the in the, um, in the gym, or, you know, obviously you know, in the uh, conditioning program to get him right. Because Cam Jurgens, it's funny he might be um, smaller than this guy, but I believe right now he's probably stronger because he's had a year in, and um, he plays with you know like such a good base and he's athletic, more athletic. Um, so he has more room for error in a lot of. Um, in a lot of situations, so um, that'll. I mean, yeah, but elite power. I, I don't. I don't think Jam, Cam Jam Cam Jurgens has elite power either. But that being said, um, he can also be more of a finesser because he's quicker, faster, um, and his, his hand usage doesn't have the best arm length to play tackle at the next level. You can see he over overcompensates for this when he drops into his pass set and makes him vulnerable to inside moves. Yeah. Exactly. They, they know where uh, they know where he doesn't want them to go, so that's where they faint and then go inside. So um, they can use. I mean, like I said, this, it's an information game. It's like spy, you know, warfare out there. They know you. They know you know your tells. So you can't hide from them. You have to do the best at making everything look the same um, as much as possible. Otherwise, you know, you run the risk of getting exposed. You know, the weakness is going to be inside again. This isn't helped by having short arms because you overcompensate as a tackle and give you up space inside. Playing at guard will obviously help this issue massively. Yeah. So, you know, it'll, uh, you're not going to be there on the island. A lot of, you know, we saw, I watched a lot of clips of Cam Dragon Heat, you know, playing in tandem 
um, double blocking guys uh, at the next level. Uh, not like so at, uh, at D tackle. So he even engaged in, on the right guard, even coming from like center or a guard at times. And yeah, he looked good. Yeah, it was the same guy. He just had his number, <laughs> even though it wasn't ninety seven. He was fifty one, but you know he had his number. And um, I, I'm excited to see that battle in training camp because it's going to be very telling um, as to how far. Um, Jurgens has come and how ready um, Steen is. May protect as a guard the next level due to arm length, but has never taken a step inside the college. College, like I said, this is the concern because how does he translate? We don't know. Um, and basically, they surmise that you know he could be uh, a good backup at guard and at tackle, especially next year after Jack Driscoll rides off into the sunset, getting a free agent contract. Most likely, um, you know, maybe six to seven million could be. Um, he's, he's a decent guy and I think he could get better with more uh, quality uh, practice and time devoted to him being a starter but um, I, like I said I don't I don't see him beating Cam Jurgens this year I think he'll be our, our right guard next year after you know he's out of year seasoning and uh, getting ready getting his strength up you know getting uh, his body right and uh, getting the right fuel and nutrition and sleep and rest and uh, just learning how to be a pro so um yeah, I mean, Stoutland is a great coach, man. He, he's, I think, you know, he probably was maybe inside there, like, kind of giving the Eagles a sign off, like, hey, this guy, uh, I believe in, he can make this transition if this is what we need, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Like, it, it's great to have a guy that um, knows talent. Like, he was at the, uh, not Pro Bowl, the, the um, NFL Combine as well, like, cheating out there. I'm you know, getting a look at, you know, the, the, the merchandise. He's like, yeah, I want this one. <laughs> Pause. I mean, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I see Cam Jurgens as winning this job. Like you said, he's six foot three, two, uh, 303, um, but he's had a year in the system and, um, he's athletic and he, he's gotten stronger and, you know, he just, you know, he, he knows, um, he's, he's had a, he, he did some, you know, a little bit cross training at guard as well. Um, and yeah, he, he, he's, he's smaller, but, um, I feel like he can use his, his assets, you know, his, his playing speed, um, his quickness. And, you know, he, he he's pretty strong as well. And, like, he was one of the top performers in the bench, you know, Prince as well. And he's only had time, you know, to get even stronger. And um, he doesn't have to be, like, the, the strong, you know, the, the most physical guy. He can also finesse there and also get, do more double teaming with him um, if need be on the interior there. Um, and, yeah, I, I think... He's going to see the eye, you know, game with the eyes of a center as well. That will help him at guard as well. So um, lots of benefits to uh, using him at uh, guard in, instead of um, Steen. And I think it just has that, you know, he's, he's you know, had a year of season. And that makes all a world, a world of difference. Like I said, those little snaps that I watch of him playing against the Titans, he was, um, more, he was more than ready. Um, and like I said, for, you know, what he lacks in the size he'll be able to make up for with you know more than adequate power and uh the finesse element of his game that you know he could use to uh take guys out and then we did a lot of double team in our scheme so it helps out those guys in the interior but anyways maybe a boring video for you but well, i know you're not even watching though you know you didn't even make it this far it's all good though because i love making videos like this it's a challenge for me not as well versed on the on the line but you know like i i know different things and you know, I could study and, you know, also watch other YouTubers and include in on different elements. So it was a fun video to make. Anyways, it went way too long. But like I said, you're not even here. It's all good, though, because as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's mother then go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron. Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs, or other social media.